I went to a, a, a beer garden in our little town and I was talking to a woman. She goes, this is my husband. And he, that was the first thing he said, are you gay? And I said, no, why? He goes, well, because what you're wearing. I said, well, you don't have to be gay to wear a skirt and high heels. He goes, well, yeah, you do. And I said, no, I'm not gay, but I'm wearing a skirt and high heels. He goes, huh. You can see the wheels turning in his head like, how is this possible? This episode of What's Underneath Masculinity is made possible with the support of BetterHelp. If you want to start therapy, give BetterHelp a try and head to betterhelp.com slash what's underneath for 10% off your first month. Can you talk a little bit about what your style says about you? It's basically just freedom of expression, being comfortable with what you want to wear and how you want to express yourself. I enjoy wearing heels because I like the way they look. And so my style is kind of basically focused around the, the heels themselves. And then the skirts kind of accent the heels, the ankle bracelets. And the higher the heel, it kind of gives you more of a sense of confidence and empowerment. That's kind of what kind of got me started wearing high heels. In the first place, I saw a woman walking through the airport. And, you know, I heard that distinctive click, click, click. And I turned around and I, I saw this woman wearing, you know, a pair of stilettos heels. She just had that look of confidence and empowerment. And I kind of feel that when I wear a little bit higher heel, I feel a little bit more confident. When was that moment that you saw her? That was about six years ago. And what was your style like then? I was just wearing traditional men's suit and jacket, you know, pants and a, and a jacket and stuff and normal men's shoes and stuff. And had you ever before that um, thought about wearing women's clothing or was that like No, I mean, I hadn't thought about wearing women's clothing, but I, I did experiment wearing high heels in college with a, an old girlfriend. So we were both students at, in college and we were living together. She was six foot tall, I was six foot tall, and she loved to wear like four inch high heels all the time. So after work or classes, we'd come home and we'd put on like a, a Lionel Richie album or a Commodore's album and, and slow dance before we went to bed. And she liked to dance in high heel shoes, of course, but then she'd be like much taller than I was. And she said, well, why don't you just wear a pair of my heels? And luckily we wore the same, we're the same height, we wore the same size shoe. So I, I put on her shoes and I was, you know, very uh, surprised that I was able to walk in them and, and was able to, you know, just just have, I had no problems wearing heels. I didn't feel feminine or anything like that. So, I mean, I didn't feel like I was crossing any genders or anything like that. It was just something that was very natural. And I think uh, my girlfriend kind of made it that way, you know, made me feel that way. She so. was a like, very open-minded person. Yeah. yeah. So six years ago, what was your next move after seeing this woman? Yeah, I talked to my wife. Okay. I said, hey, listen, I want to go buy a pair of high heels. And, you know, she was kind of like, what? And then I explained to her about, you know, my, my time at college. She goes, yeah, yeah let's, let's, let's go buy, let's go buy your pair of heels. So we just went to a, a small shoe store. I mean, the town I live in is 30,000 people. So I didn't feel embarrassed or anything like that. You know, if people saw me in the store trying on heel, high heels and something, you know, they may think, well, that guy's, you know, a little strange, but I really don't care because I'll probably never see that person again. So I did try one time to go like the full feminine type thing. And I just felt so uncomfortable mm. doing that. So what, what were you wearing? I wore like a dress and, and uh, my wife brought a wig from one of her friends. We tried the makeup and everything and it just, I just, I, did, I didn't feel like me. I felt like a complete different person. It's, it's genuinely that you really love I skirts just and love heels. the skirts and the heels, yes. So it's not just, I love women's clothing in general, or right. I want to And that's, why, that's, that's why I don't like wear dresses or, or women's blouses. For one thing, the women's blouses don't fit right. Mm -hmm. uh, the sleeves are usually too short or too tight in the shoulders. Mm -hmm. and, and dresses are the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I, I like my style. I like wearing, you know, the men's button-down shirts. Basically, it's kind of all I wear. So... Can you talk about assumptions that people make about you based on how you dress? I would probably say probably 90% of the people that see me automatically think I'm gay. Just on my, my Instagram account, even though I like on my, my bio, I put straight CIS, you know, male, I still get, you know, lots of messages from, from men or women asking what my sexuality is. 
just because of what I wear. I'll get messages from men that say, I know you're straight, but do you want to try it? <laughs> you know, and I, you know, I just, I basically just delete it. You know, like I went to a, a, a beer garden in our little town and, and I was talking to a woman. She goes, this is my husband. And he, that was the first thing he said, are you gay? And I said, no, why? He goes, well, because what you're wearing. I said, well, you don't have to be gay to wear a skirt and high heels. Mm -hmm. He goes, well, yeah, you do. And I said, no, I'm not gay, but I'm wearing a skirt and high heels. He goes, huh. <laughs> you can see the wheels turning in his head like, how is this possible? There's still some women that think, you know, that I'm, that I'm feminine and they like to date feminine men. They think I'm in touch with my emotions, and I guess there's some men that you know hard, have a hard time expressing how they feel. I have a hard time expressing how I feel. I don't think I got a feminine bone on my body, so you know it's just hard to define femininity and, and masculinity. You can be a man and be feminine, or you can be you can be a, a woman and be masculine and feminine. You can mix the two. Yeah. I mean, it's just it it really just depends on the person. And what about like work and... Yeah, work? also, do, does anyone assume that you do what you do professionally? I'm a mechanical engineer by degree, uh, but I've been in robotic packaging for, for almost 25, 30 years. So a lot of people, it's the same people that, you know, assume what my sexuality is are just surprised, well, he's, wow, he's an engineer. Mm -hmm. Typically, that's a very masculine type field. And also, oh, he's a football coach. Well, that, that doesn't fit what he wears. So yeah, I, I think it shocks a lot of people. I talked to the HR department first, you know, just to make sure that they were comfortable with it. And they said, well, we'd, we'd prefer you not to wear this. Some people may be offended or something, but we really can't tell you, you can't either. So my first pair of shoes, high heels I wore to the office were kind of an Oxford type place up shoe, but it had like a three inch block heel on it. You know, from the front, it looked like just a pair of men's shoes. It had laces, the wingtips on it. From the back, you can definitely see it was a, you know, a heeled shoe. So, and then I moved to like a stiletto pump with the pants. And there's also like a joke, you know, around the office. Hey, you know, one of these days, Mark's gonna wear a skirt or a dress to the office. So I figured, okay, it's summertime, it's warm. It's a, one of these really hot days. And, and I just wore a skirt and, and really no one really gave it much thought. What about reactions from like family? You know, my, my children are probably my biggest fans. My son was a little bit hesitant at first just because he's been in the military. He tolerated it, I guess. You know, he really didn't say, Dad, no, I don't want you to wear this. Or Dad, you, I feel uncomfortable when you wear this around me. Where my daughters say, hey, Dad, I, I love what you're doing. I think you're great. What you're doing is great. You're helping a lot of people and stuff. But my son's really never opened up to it. That's probably because he's just like me. He's a hard, sometimes has a hard time expressing himself, so. We know you're really gripped by the story you're hearing, but we just wanted to interrupt this episode very quickly to tell you a little bit about our incredible sponsor, BetterHelp. Hey mom, how do you feel about therapy? Uh, therapy has literally saved my life. How? It has been absolutely one 100% life-defining in terms of being able to be in touch with your true self, healing your old and deep wounds that might be running your life and feeling your feelings, but then understanding underneath it all that you're this vibrant whole person that just in many ways is functioning from blind spots or things that you don't see. And then once you see them, you become free. If you're thinking of starting therapy, we really recommend that you give BetterHelp a try. BetterHelp is entirely online and it's designed to be very convenient and flexible to suit your schedule. All you have to do is just fill out a brief questionnaire and you'll be matched with a licensed therapist that meets your needs. And if for any reason you're not satisfied or you want to switch therapists, you can do so for no extra charge at any time. Visit betterhelp.com slash what's underneath for 10% off your first month. That's better H E L P dot com slash what's underneath for 10% off your first month. And now back to the episode. Can we take off your vest? Sure. What about, so I know that like recently there was something on social media where like something that you had said like hurt the LGBT community. Can you talk about that experience and how that affected you and how you handled that? 
I'm very bad with acronyms. And the LGBTIQ plus community is not in my daily vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So I was in, in this interview and I just said LGB and blah, 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 blah. And if you look at the interview, I kind of struggle with the LGBT thing. Of course, I'm saying it more, I'm trying to say it more and more and more, but I got criticized that I left the T off and I did it on purpose as a, as a dig at the, the trans community. It wasn't on purpose or anything like that. So then when I said I want to keep myself separate between the community and myself, that was because basically, you know, a lot of people assume what my sexual orientation is. And if I associated myself with the community, if I got up, you know, walked down a parade with the rainbow flag or something like that, then I'm basically endorsing that it's okay to assume what a person wears dictates what their sexuality is. Mm -hmm. So I want to keep myself separated just so there wouldn't be any confusion. Some questions that were asked were, why do I feel safe walking down the middle of the street when a trans person wearing the same clothes? Why would I feel safe and yet they have this fear in their lives? You know, they're, they're, they're scared. And, and my reaction was that, you know, it's not the clothes, it's not what they're wearing. I mean, I present myself as a very masculine cis man. And this is where I get, get myself in trouble, where you're expressing yourself, your, your sexuality through clothes and stuff. I think that's what triggers the toxic masculinity or triggers that person to show rage or violence or something towards that person. I'm all for people expressing what they want to do and how they are, uh, but it's just the reality. I think I understand what your, your intent with quote unquote like separating yourself from mm -hmm. the queer community. Like I understand what you were intending to say with that. Right. You're saying your clothes don't have to signify sexuality or, right. or gender stuff, which makes sense and is true. But I actually think that maybe like part of the criticism or, or the reason that that didn't land is in the sense that queer and trans people have paved a way for some degree of open-mindedness right, right. for I mean, someone I'm, like you to yeah. dress this way and for people to not be just completely shocked. And on the other side of that, I actually think you're more connected maybe than you realize in the sense that like you also are playing a role in being an ally to that community possibly if you're also opening minds you know, and making it safer for them to dress right. how they want to dress. Yeah. So you're I mean, actually I mean, very it, it's, connected. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah. very connected, but you know, a lot of the LGBT community uses clothing to express their sexuality. They want to wear feminine type clothing to be able to express their femininity. Mm -hmm. And I don't wear feminine clothes to express my femininity. That's right. where I, that's what I, that's the, the thing I want to kind of draw the line between. And a few in the uh, LGBT community don't like that because they want to be able to use clothing to express themselves. And, and stuff, why, so. do the, why do they have to be mutually exclusive? Your point can exist alongside theirs. Right, right. Right? Right. It doesn't have to be But we don't have to be others. together also. I don't have to be part of their community to wear what I wear. Oh, for sure. Right. But you can be an ally and support them. Right, yeah. And I, I, I consider myself an ally. Mm -hmm. we're, we're both trying to do the same thing. We're both trying to promote nonviolence and stuff that where it becomes what a person wears, they should have the freedom to do it without fear of anything, whether that's uh, abuse or, or threats or just being laughed at or they're having their sexual orientation questioned. Mm -hmm. I'm not very good at expressing some of my views and stuff. I mean, I've got a clear mind, but how I express it may be a little different. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to hurt anyone or, or you know, discredit anybody or, or, or offend anyone by saying that. What I'm trying to do is, is get where people are used to seeing a man wearing high, high heels. It should be acceptable to wear whatever anyone should wear and get it more mainstream where people don't feel threatened by a person wearing a skirt and high heels. There's a lot of men out there that want to wear women's clothes. I'm trying to get where, oh, that's just a guy walking down the street wearing a skirt. It could be a gay guy walking down the street wearing a skirt. Oh, that's just a guy walking down the skirt or well, that's a straight guy walking down the street, to get it where it's just, hey, that's a guy walking down the street wearing a skirt. Or just that's a person yeah. in a, that and is that's, just a person being a person. It's just a person, it's just a person wearing clothes. Being a, right. Being a person. Mm -hmm. 
you take the gender out of it, you're not really wearing women's clothes. So you're not expressing femininity or things like that. It's just clothes. On the one hand, just you just deciding to do this because you just want to do it like that. You just felt it and you want to do it. No big deal. And hardly anyone said anything. But on the other hand, it is a huge political statement. It's a big deal. Like it is a big deal yeah. because of a huge history of oppression and people not being able to be who they want to be. And it's created enormous problems, right? Mm -hmm. and, and while clothing is just a nothing thing on the one hand, it is showing how incredibly associated clothing is and how we appear and what we put on with identity and what a struggle it's been for people to be able to have their own identities. And it's very, very hard right. for them to have that. And you're lucky, you're privileged that you're in the position that you're in, that you've been able to do this and have very little repercussions for yourself mm -hmm. personally. I think, as I said, I think it's just because I basically portray myself as a man, as a straight man. A gay man should have the same freedom and have no sense of fear as I do. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what clothes they're wearing or stuff like that. I mean, society should be accepting of everybody. We should have more concerns in this world other than what people are wearing. Me wearing a skirt should be the least you're worried. We should be worried about racism. We should be worried about wars. We should be worried about people starving. We should, there's more things than worry. The world's not gonna end because Mark Bryan is wearing a skirt and high heels. And, you know, if, if, I, if I can change, you know, just a few people's opinion and get them accept everything mm -hmm. or get them accept that change is okay, people being different is okay, then I feel like I've completed my mission, mm -hmm. even though I really don't have a stated mission. You rock a garter belt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they really are so beautiful. I mean, yeah, and, you know, it's, I've always, you know, people say, oh, you, you're, you're so sexy and stuff like that. I, I, my intention isn't to be sexy, but it's a very functional device. No one's ever had a picture of me wearing a garter belt before, so, well, so you guys will be the first. When do you feel the most vulnerable? <laughs> I really don't feel vulnerable at times, so. What about in this controversy? Maybe when I may be misquoted or something like that, not being able to express myself properly, you know, what's in my brain and what comes out of my mouth sometimes could be different. So, you know, like the thing with this interview with this thing, you know, I was kind of like really angry at the way things went down and kind of like really disappointed mm -hmm. and stuff, but it really wasn't like something to cry over or something. So, you know, I just kind of looked at it as, a, as something to, you know, be saddened that it happened and then look forward to see how to correct it mm -hmm. and make myself a better person, use it as a learning experience. It's a pretty beautiful way to look at it. Mm -hmm. It's the only way to look at life, so. When was the last time you cried? Well, they, they weren't tears of sadness, they were tears of joy uh, when we won our football game. My football team that I coach is actually women. And when we won the championship, you know, I was just saying, you know, I was so proud of them and all the hard work and stuff that they put into it. And I got a little teary-eyed, a little bit, a little bit teary-eyed now, now thinking about it, so. so. When do you feel the most handsome? Probably when I'm wearing, probably like maybe what I was wearing before we started this, like a nice jacket, tie, nice skirt, and some nice pumps. What's your favorite part of your body? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of proud of my legs, so. Uh, that's probably one reason why I don't mind showing them, so. They're, yeah, you got great legs. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> and last question, what does it mean to you to be man enough? I really don't think anything's manly or too manly or not man enough, or I really haven't put a gauge on what is manly and what, is it, what isn't manly. Mm -hmm. I think just going through life and just doing what you feel comfortable doing. And if you feel like a man doing it, or you feel like a woman doing it, or you feel like whatever you want to do, there's really no definition of what is manly, what is not, at, at least to me. Wearing a skirt and high heels, most people wouldn't consider manly. So, you know, I get, I get a lot of comments on my Instagram. Hey, be a man, you know, wear pants. I said, I am a man, but I'm just wearing a skirt, so.
How do you feel now? I mean, every, every time I speak about my conflicts with the with the community and stuff, it just kind of gives me a little bit more clarification on mm-hmm. next time I'm a little bit more, I might, I'll, might be able to express myself a little bit more clearer, so. Mm-hmm.